Okay, hey, we're back at the TJ Zizzo Peak Mortar <laughs> Oil Garage again. Right. Remember last time? It was so freaking cold. You're right. <laughs> I had a hat on and my winter jacket, all because we choose to spend money on race car parts and not heating Instead the place. Instead of heat, yes. Right, I right. do remember that. Yeah. So. I think you can see my breath in this place. I, I think so, I think We won't so. tell the fire department that and, and And thankfully, spring has arrived with our first 85 degree day. So what constitutes a perfect run in a top fuel car? There's no such thing. No? We're drag racers. We, we, if we think we made a, a world record run or a career best run, right, it's not good enough. We could have done something better. I could have gone in a little shallower. I could have kept it a little straighter. Um, the crew chief could have applied clutch at, the, at a better spot in the racetrack. I mean, so there is no, I haven't made a, I've made in my career top fuel car, I think I've made close to maybe 350, 400 runs now. Okay. Um, in our alcohol car, I made 500 runs. So I'm approaching definitely about a thousand or so runs in my career. I haven't yet made my perfect run yet. So. Okay, well, there's, there's reason to continue to get out there. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. So we're here again on a Tuesday night. You've got the crew here. Uh, we walked in, you guys were eating food. Is this like the regular routine? Yeah, it is a regular routine. And as soon as I heard you guys pitter-patter through the door, <laughs> I said, okay, guys, scatter. Let's make sure we're working, make sure that we're putting on a show, right? Right. Because we were just eating and lollygagging. Not okay. really. Honestly, when we eat, TJ, you know, the, the crew always tells me, TJ, do you ever stop talking? Yeah. Because the case is, what I'm doing, I went through a three page list of things to do, okay. list of things to purchase that we need to do before English Town or directly after English Town. Okay. So we were going through that list to see if we've accomplished anything in the past two weeks and what we need to accomplish in the next week and a half before we leave. Okay. So it was actually, over lunch, we also make sure that we are getting things accomplished. Okay. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and then you, you guys walked in. Yeah, and, we and you can have your like meetings mice. and you can talk about things that happen and things you want to get done. And so E-Town's your next uh, race for the NHRA. And then you've got several back-to-back uh, -back races coming up through the through the months of June and July. Um, are you guys looking forward to that? I'll tell you this right now. <laughs> we are absolutely looking forward to it. Okay. At the same time, we're very apprehensive about it. The reason I say that is people from the outside see drag racing as, oh, when you're at the racetrack, you work on a race car. Well, we do 10% of our work on the race car at the racetrack. Right. We do everything here at the shop, so right. we're prepared for the event, right. right? So this is where this is going to become an issue. Uh, as you mentioned, we go to English Town. Right. Okay? Then we have a month off and we go to Joliet. Okay. End of June. Last weekend of June. Okay. Piece of cake, we got a month off in between, right? right? Then we have about truly two and a half weeks off before the semi hits the road for San Francisco. Okay. All right. And then it goes to Seattle, All right. Washington. And then it comes back down here for two days. And two days, I mean two days, to regroup and go to Brainerd, Minnesota. Okay. Then it comes back here for about six days. Then we go to Indy. Then it comes back here for maybe two, three weeks, and then we go to Dallas. Okay. So there's a lot of racing going on. I think we got six of nine weekends of racing. Okay. So are we excited about it? Yeah. yeah. Anytime we get a, get a chance to go to a racetrack, we're jacked. Right. Our team's excited. At the same time, we've all told our significant others, our bosses, <laughs> that don't expect to see us too much. Right. Because we're going to be on the road. Right. So that scares a lot of guys, too. I mean, you know, remember, we all have regular jobs. Oh, yeah. I know our body shop will probably get slowed down while I'm not there for many weeks on end, really. Um, I know everyone here has regular jobs where they got to tell their bosses they're not going to be there. Maybe the car at Lexus doesn't get done in a timely fashion because Chris isn't there. Right. For an example. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be pretty exciting, but we also know that as soon as we start that, yeah. It's gonna just fly by. It's game time. Right, yeah. It's game time. It's game time. You're, it, you're in the, the Super Bowl it, now. Right, yeah. at the end of it, we're gonna be like, wow. Darn it, let's do it again. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. so. There is, know. there is the love of the sport out there, and, and your guys, I mean, they wouldn't be here on a Tuesday night. And this is a volunteer crew. I mean, you know, besides feeding them and giving them a great flight out to the tracks and all the prestige. Great flight. And, never, yeah, never, never, never a delay. Never delay, never, no. You know. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> well, now you're ready. You've got to, you qualified twice. Uh, you're ready to go some rounds. And um, this next race at E-Town, um, how's the weather out there? What's, <laughs> what's that like? <laughs> well, we've raced in some extreme, extremely good weather. Uh, Pomona, of course, is always strong. 
Uh, Gainesville, weather was fantastic. Okay. Charlotte, the weather was good. Houston, we were at sea level, so it was good atmospheric conditions. The track was marginal. And you had um, some rain that, too. Had so some you rain, had, had some had of some the weather come through, yeah. Charlotte and Houston. Okay. And I look at this, you know, we're talking about our season. Our season, we've only made 13 passes. Okay. 13 passes this year. So most teams in our situation made 13 passes in January. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, we were a little bit behind. We're catching up again. Um, English Town, the weather, it's always good out there. I mean, once okay. again, you got good atmospheric conditions. Of course, you know, it's at this point, it's really 16 days away. Yeah. From race time. And that's, uh, what, the first weekend in June? Uh, yeah. First that, weekend in June. Right. right. So, so, you know, I think at night the atmosphere conditions are great there. Um, during the day, we'll see. Uh, it's still 16 days away. Uh, Tom Skilling hasn't told me. Or Mike Kaplan. <laughs> Absolutely. In our case. Right. Mike Kaplan <laughs> yeah. hasn't told our me. Our personal weather right, guy. <laughs> hasn't told me the weather um, yeah. 16 days away in, in Englishtown. But uh, last year we competed there. The weather was fantastic. Uh, okay. We ran our career best pass there. Okay. So uh, we look forward to duplicating that uh, this time. Now talk about the altitude change in, uh, let's say, San Francisco, Seattle, as opposed to Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how much faster, and is it is it a tune-up thing that you're working on as far as the, the tuning and to get the car at its peak level? Um, is that the most important thing, or is it, you know, the actual, uh, uh, you know, like local stuff, uh, you know, getting the car to run the track, the condition of the track? What's, what's the most important thing in that? An engine is nothing but a big air pump. That's all it is. It's really all it is in real life. So it sees atmosphere than it's more than it sees anything else. Okay. We could we could describe our clutch setup because of our race tracks, all those things. But if you don't have the air to make horsepower, it's a completely different animal. Okay. So we squeeze it in different directions to try to make up for the for okay. poor air quality. And you're adjusting that with fuel. Head gasket. Okay. A lot a lot goes with head gasket. Okay. Um, you know that's just that's one minor aspect of it. But yeah, we're adjusting it with. Um, compression, we're adjusting it with how much fuel we're putting at it because if you have thin air, okay, and you have air that is has a lot of water content in it, um, like we did in Houston, there's a lot of grains of moisture in here. Well, now you say, well, you're going to do that with magneto, right? Well, no matter what you do with ignition on this thing, you're not going to be able to burn water. You right. can't do it. Right. It's, it's, it's not possible. God hasn't made allowed us to do that yet, right? So once we could burn water, it won't be a big deal, but until then, that's a problem. So you try to put as much mag as you can. Well, you're going to drop a hole with that. Um, you're trying to stuff all this fuel in there. You're not burning it. It's just going to drop a hole. Okay. Um, so those are interesting concepts when yeah. it comes to the air quality. Okay. Um, so that's something that we've we've had to work around because we went to our first three or four races, first three events, and it was air quality was fantastic. Sea level, good quality air, right. dense air. Went to Houston. It was a little different. So we had to adapt to that. Went out there, put a hole out first pass. Decided, okay, we need to lean this out a little bit. We did it. We were fine. Um, so, you know, that's just another way of adjusting for the weather. Okay. Well, TJ, thanks for allowing us to be here. We're going to talk to your dad a little bit more, and then, uh, you know what, we wish you the best of luck. We're still pulling for you. We're the uh, two of your biggest fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and I know your uh, audience out there, too, appreciates it as well. So uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for paying attention to us. Thanks for loving us. And, uh, man, I hope to win a race this year. Yeah, we, we hope you do, too. <laughs> so now we're here with... Uh, the main man, Tony Zizzo, um, head of the operations here. You know, TJ gets to do the, all the fun stuff, the driving, and he kind of manages, you know, manages the people, makes sure things going on. But you kind of have the vision of what's happening here. How's it going so far this year? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this year, beginning of the season, not so well. We went through the first couple races with problems. The problems that we have were self-inflicted. We changed a bunch of stuff on the car. We didn't make any changes. We made enough changes, though we didn't do any testing with those changes, so here we are. Okay. Going the first race of the year, and I'm sure TJ talked about this a little bit. First race of the year, lost. Completely lost. Not knowing what we're doing, we look like a bunch of monkeys and whatever. <laughs> a couple races down the, down the ways, we're still looking like a bunch of monkeys, okay? Then we said, well, we gotta figure this problem out. We can't be continuing to do this. So we did put our heads together and we figured out what the problem was, mostly in the fuel system, and now the car is responding to everything we give it. Yeah. It's, we make changes and the car likes it. We talk to the car and it responds. Before it would swear at us, now it would respond and say, okay, I'll do that. So that's the story about the car. Okay. So to answer your question, beginning of the season was really awful. It's getting much better. 
okay? And it was all because we didn't do any testing over the winter. Okay, and so um, your um, your guys over here polishing the wheels. You've got some guys uh, do, building some heads. They're working on the fuel systems. Uh, you know, is this kind of standard operating procedure uh, on Tuesday nights? Tuesday night, Tuesday nights, the guys get together here because we chose that night to be night during the week and okay. all day Sunday we're here. <clears throat> the guys polishing the wheels. They come in here and they want to be mechanics right away. Well, okay. you know what? Before you're a mechanic in my car and before you turn a single wrench, you're going to polish the wheel in a semi. Yeah. Because okay. you have to learn the ropes. You're not just going to jump into a 10,000 horsepower top fuel dragster okay. and start turning wrenches. You watch us turn wrenches, and when I tell you you're ready, okay. you'll be ready. Well, there you go. That's, that's exactly, that and that's exactly the way it probably mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. done. You know?